Emacs vendor registration, entering tax and payment information. Before we begin, a little bit of background. Your initial registration or profile one is a basic registration that adds you to the vendor list. This allows you to receive notifications from the state of Montana regarding bid and event opportunities. This also allows you the ability to respond to those bid or event opportunities. Contract registration or profile two is required before a contract is awarded. This will prompt you to enter in your payment and tax information. This allows us to manage your contracts accordingly. If you currently have a contract with the state of Montana, this will not change your current payments. For more information, please go to our website at spb.mt.gov vendor resources, vendor registration portal. Contract registration or profile two registration first begins by receiving an email notification to complete that registration. So that email is going to look similar to the one when you first initially registered, but this is specifically for profile two. So here, what you're going to do is within that email, you're just going to click on the register now button and it'll redirect you to a new web page. And on this web page, you just want to click on continue with registration and you're going to log in and it'll take you to that welcome page similar to when you first initially registered. But on here, it's going to look a little bit different. So you can see here, there's all the tabs that we had prior um, up to diversity. So now there's two additional tabs that we have to complete, payment information and tax information. And you're also gonna notice too that next to addresses and contacts, those check marks are gray. So there's some missing information that we have to fill out there. So we'll go through those tabs throughout the video. But first we're gonna start with company overview. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on get started and it'll take us to company overview. And from here, we already have our prior responses um, from when we initially registered. So all I need to do here is add in my tax ID number that looks like it has a star next to it. So I have to put that information in there. So I'm going to enter in my nine digit tax identification number for my business. And remember, do not put the dash in there. Just put in your nine digits. And from there, you're going to go down and answer the additional questions. So these additional questions, one, is regarding registering with Secretary of State. If you're not sure, please contact them at the information provided there. And also if you're registered with the Department of Labor and Industry. So some construction trades need to be registered. So contact them if you're unsure. But if you are registered with the Secretary of State's office, make sure to put in your registration number with no letters. So it usually begins with a letter and then your numbers. So make sure just to take the letter off and put your numbers there. And same with the um, construction contractor registration. I believe that they um, do have a letter in there. And just remember, no letters, no dashes, just numbers. And then from here, we'll hit save changes and then move on to the next. So the next tab is business details and I don't need to change any information on this. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on to addresses. So on addresses, remember, if there's a blue box up at the top that says required information, it's telling you that you need to complete that required information. So remember, in order to add addresses, you're going to click add address and the wizard will pop up and take you through this step. So here I'm going to label this my main office and then down below here, there's all three of these options are checkmarked, but what I want to do is uncheck fulfillment and physical because I already have those two addresses listed. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that and click next. And then I'm going to enter in the information here. And then on this page, remember, I like to enter in my contacts on the next page. So I'm going to click not applicable, but in another video, I will be going through on how to add a contact from this page. So um, check out our other videos to get more information on that. Final step of the wizard is to label this location. So I'm just going to put in main office. And then under location type, I'm going to keep headquarters. And then in description, because I do have to put something in there, I'm just going to put main office as well. And then save changes. So here, as you can see, it's saved. And now I'm on the contacts page. But let's go back to the addresses and just make sure that the remittance got added. And it did. So now we can go and move on to contacts. Contacts, again, 
Here I need to add in that remittance information. Remember the blue box. Make sure you check that. And so I'm going to go down to add contact, remittance, and I'm going to enter in that information for the remittance contact. So that's going to be Tom. He handles all of our sales. So I have all that and I'm gonna hit save changes. And now the remittance contact is added. Now the next two tabs, location and diversity, those are already green check mark. I don't really need to change anything on those two. And under payment information, you can see there's that blue box required. So I need to add at least one payment type. If you're already doing work with the state of Montana and you already have a payment method, what you can go ahead and do is just enter in um, a check. So this will not change how you currently are getting paid. So we're going to fill out that information. And so now we have that check listed there. It's not um, a direct deposit, so I'm going to select no here. But let's say we do want to go ahead and add that direct deposit in. So we'll go through how to do that. So you're going to go back up to add payment information select direct deposit and that same wizard will pop up but now what you're wanting to do is you're going to enter in all of that information so you're going to label it you can label it your bank if you wish or contract name tom he does um all of the sales and all that other stuff so i'm going to add him so he'll get notifications regarding any uh, payment questions. And so here I'm just going to go ahead and fill out this information. So now I'm going to hit save changes. So now because I did select the um, direct deposit, I need to upload a copy of avoided check. So I'm going to go find a copy of a check that I uploaded. And you can also drag and drop your file as well if you have it on your desktop. Here I have added that and you can also re-label um, it if you wish as well. And then hit next. So now I have my payment information entered in and it takes me to tax information. So now I need to add a W-9. So see required information, I need to upload my W-9. So there's two different ways. The first way here is if we already have a signed copy of our W-9, we're gonna go ahead and just label this document and it's for the tax year 2020. And so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find that a copy of that. So here I did find, I'm gonna relabel it. So now I'm good to go and I can hit save changes. So I don't have to worry that it's not signed because it actually is a signed copy of the W-9. Don't worry about that. So the next step is to add a W-9 if you don't have one. We have an option where you can download a pre-populated form. You're still gonna label it and mark the correct tax year. But here you're gonna click on this little link that says download pre-populated tax document. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna automatically start downloading. So you can see here down in the left-hand corner, I'm gonna open that up and it has all the information that's needed pre-populated on that form. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have to save a copy to my documents or desktop, wherever you wish to save it so you can find it. And I'm gonna close out of this so I can get back to the registration. And so now I'm gonna go and find that file. Okay, so now I have it uploaded. So now I need to sign, electronically sign it. So I'm gonna click on, I certify that this tax document and you're gonna enter in your password. So this is the password that you use to log into your profile. So you're gonna type that in and hit save changes and it electronically signs that document. So the next step, is to proceed to certify and submit. At this point, we have all green check marks. We're good to go. We got all the additional information that we needed in there for profile two. So I'm gonna click on I certify and submit that all the information is true and accurate. And I can hit submit and go back to the welcome page. Thank you so much for watching. And if you need additional information, please go to our website at spb.mt.gov, email us, or give us a call. And if you're having any troubles with your password, please contact the Jager customer support number on your screen.